Hey, how you doing? Dr. Dave, the RV dummy, back with you today to answer all of your RV questions. And today, by the way, thanks so much for all of your interaction, your, your comments, your likes on my videos lately. I really, really appreciate it. So if you like this one, make sure you um, give it a like. If you have not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. And also very important, I love it when you comment because as I said, I've always said this all along, I try to respond to every single comment, question, whatever out there. So I loved, keep them coming, just keep them coming. And I've got a great question today from, let's see, let me read this from, she did not ask me to keep this confidential. Remember, when you ask me to keep your name confidential, I will, but this is not financial at all either. So I feel comfortable giving her name. Kathy Williamson from Kansas City, Missouri. Um, what she's asking me is, she says she is, she and her husband are 48 years old with two teenage children. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's, it's great. Um, she said, we love Class B vans, and we want to know if purchasing a Class B would be great for our family. We will listen to the RV dummy for advice. So you trust the RV dummy? Really? Well, in that case, the RV dummy is going to give his opinion right now. So first of all, Kathy, thanks so much for writing in. Uh, great that you have an interest in, in, in getting into the RV world. Um, I love Class Bs. I mean, I'm on my second Class B right now. When Yoko and I first started getting into RVing, we had a leisure travel van, uh, which unfortunately caught fire at the um, at the battery store when the battery they were trying to switch out some coach batteries, and and it, it's a long story, but you probably saw that in one of my previous videos. It it caught fire. It was the insurance paid for it, so we had enough cash to parlay that into getting a actually a, a newer. Not new, but newer, newer um, Pleasure Way, which we Pleasure Way XL TS, and we love it. So again, um, I can totally identify with the fact that um, you know people just love these Class Bs, and um, what I like about them is that, that you can use them as not only an RV, but when you pull into camp or where you're driving around, you're driving cross country, you can kind of use it as a regular vehicle. I mean, it basically fits into a. Um, almost any spot in a parking lot. Um, it, they're easier to find parking for. It's just there's so many um, advantages to a, to a Class B, whereas, you know, you've got like, I, personally, I, I wouldn't touch a Class A. That's just not for me. They're just, they're just humongous, and I, I just don't want to deal, even though, yeah, they've got great living room. Um, I don't personally want to deal with the Class A. Just way, way, way too big for my needs. And Class C's, um, nice. Very nice, but I just fell in love with the B and um, travel trailers, fifth wheels, all those kind of things. Um, I I just don't want to be hauling anything. I don't want to be towing anything at all. I want to be kind of in my vehicle at all times. So that's my opinion. Now to answer Kathy, would a class B be good for husband and wife in their 40s and two teenage children? Um, my answer is going to be no. I, I don't believe it's a good choice for, for your family. And I'll tell you why. Um, and again, this is coming from me. I, I love bees. Uh, and when Yoko and I travel with our cat Boo Boo, and we've traveled all over all over the country in our Class B, in our, in our pleasure way, um, there is enough room for the two of us and our cat. But I... I mean, theoretically, yeah. There, so here's let's let's just go over how a Class B is all laid out. Typically, you know, so it's like a large van, and typically you walk in, and to your when you walk in the door, to your right is the um, is the um, the cabin where the passenger, you know, the driver's seat, the passenger seat, the steering wheel, the dash, all that stuff that that's up front where you have to drive. And typically, there could be some seats right behind those. And most Class Bs. Um, can configure those the driver seat and the passenger seat. They can fold down and and for, go into a system where you could sleep a person in each of those each of those chairs. You could do that. 
uh, they could go all the way down. And, and so, so you, have, you could have two people sleeping up front. Um, then you go past, as you go towards the back of the van, the middle and the back of the van, there's the um, generally the kitchen, the bathroom um, area. And then you get to the very back where, again, they're all different, but typically there's going to be some type of a sitting arrangement, uh, tip, normally a sofa. And then that sofa will fold down into a, usually a fairly nice size queen bed and in our pleasure way what i really like about it is ours is, is basically a king it's it's like it's like a king size bed so it's it's great but but when you have with yoko and me in there and 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 then boo boo the cat uh, there's there's enough room but i will tell you this there are plenty of times that we are kind of um we want to maneuver around let's say yoko's cooking something and i want to use the bathroom or i want to get up front or i want to, that we're dancing around each other because there's not there's not a lot of room to move around each other if if we're both doing things now add two kids into the equation and i think it's going to be super super tight so tight that it's not going to be fun and not only that a couple other things need to consider when you have two people you know we have clothes with so we have our belongings our personal personal affects and things like that um and there's enough storage for all of that but if you have two more people that just adds either um, luggage, suitcases, places to hang and put clothes and toiletries, and you're just you're going to run out of room, I think. Um, something else to consider in many Class Bs, including our first one in our leisure travel, the the way the bathroom is laid out, the way the toilet is laid out, is oftentimes the toilet is pretty much open to the to the main hall, to the main um, living area, the, the kitchen area, the hallway, if you want to call it like a hallway, the toilet's open to that. Now there there could be a little tiny bit of privacy if you close the doors a certain way, but but in many Class Bs, you could be sitting on the toilet and you say, hey, how you doing there? Um, so we happen to have one that the toilet is totally enclosed and private in a, in a bed. The door closes all the way. Um, it's small, it's small, but it closes all the way in a total, total privacy. So that's something else you might want to consider. If you've got four people in a van and people are trying to like jockey for the toilet and it's not totally enclosed, it's going to be, I think it's going to be difficult. There's going to be almost no privacy. Um, it would not be my choice. So Kathy, I really appreciate your question. Um, I don't think it's I don't think it's going to be right for you. I just I just really don't. I think you're going to get frustrated with it. And I, RVing should be a really fun, pleasant experience. Whenever you go into your RV and travel around, you should be looking forward to it. And I think it's going to get to the point where it's going to be so congested and crowded, and and you're going to be. Like I said there's not going to be room for everything you need to do. I think you're going to be frustrated. So um, I'm going to probably recommend for you. A. Now, you could look into a Class B plus, and what those are are larger, much, much, much larger Class Bs, and that might work. Um, although, although it sounds like from what you're asking me, if you don't want to be tra uh, towing a, a travel trailer, fifth wheel, or something like that, um, you might want to really look into a, a, a medium-sized Class B. Uh, I'm sorry, a medium-sized Class C. Class C. Uh, that might actually be right for your family, because in most Class Cs, you've got that space above the um what do you call it above the um driver and passenger area you've got that kind of like that loft type area where there's usually a bed up there and i think that could actually probably fit two teenage kids sleeping up there pretty easily i think there'd be for with, with a decent sized class c and it doesn't have to be a tremendous class c but like a, a medium sized class c i think you're going to find um a lot more room and a lot more comfort for your family um you didn't really indicate how old your teenage children or the teenage could be 13 or they could be 19 now if they're 19 18 and 19 years old they're probably not going to want to go with you on your trips all the time they got lives of their own but you know 13 or 14 year old kids they're going to be they're going to be with you for a few years and travel and you want to make sure you want to make sure everybody's comfortable so um that's my take on class b's i think class b's are perfect perfect for somebody that's alone single maybe single with one pet uh or two pets perfect for that situation and also for a couple um uh, like yoko and i are doing perfect for that but i think when you get past two people in a class b i think you're going to have issues but for us for us it's 
really, really good. And I will tell you this, even with the two of us, there are times when Yoko even is hinting that maybe we should get something a little bit larger. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, you know, you're, you're, there's there's a balance because, as I said, you can you you can you can use the class B. You can drive up to Walmart easily and just park it there and run in and get groceries and things like that, um, which you really couldn't do with a class A very easily. You're not going to just you're not going to class. In case you're not you're not clear on this, class A is the the big 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 bus. Um, you're not just going to take the class A for a spin over to Walmart and. Um, and get some get some food. You're going to probably be towing another vehicle behind the class A, and you use that to drive around. That's just that's just way 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 too much for me. Now I'm not. That's not a knock on class A's. People love class A's, and they a lot of people are very successful, and they they're, they've had them for a long time. It's just not not what I'm looking for. I'm a class B kind of guy. Um, I hope that helps, Kathy. Thanks so much for writing in. Appreciate it. And again, you, if you have a question, a comment, anything, um, the RV dummy who I am, I will try my best to answer it, uh, whether I answer it just writing in the comment section or doing a whole episode. Like, Kathy probably had no idea that I was going to do this for her, doing a whole episode on her question. So greatly appreciate it. You give me great ideas when you make comments and ask questions. And again, if you have not yet, make sure you press the subscribe button over there. The bigger our community, we don't want too big. We don't want too big, but but we can handle some more good people like you. We really can. I want you and your friends and your RV buddies. And so share this with anybody in the RV community that you know um, is either actively RVing now or or looking for something or needs some help in some way. And again, we're going to be doing um, some more episodes pretty soon on. Can I afford this RV? So if you're not, if you're looking at something and you're not sure, send me all your information, and I will, um, I'll keep you confidential if you like. But I will tell you if you can afford the RV of your dreams, the one that you're looking at. Until next time, Dr. Dave, the RV dummy. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye.